everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I have for you a brand new video where I'm going to talk about the basics that you need to start a brand new makeup kit. So if you're either really young and just getting into makeup or you've never really been into makeup before and you want to start off now, I'm going to show you the products which are absolutely my holy grails and the essentials which I think you need for a brand new makeup kit. So I know that when I started with makeup I kind of bought bits and pieces and then there were loads of things that I thought this is such a waste and I really don't need it. And there are so many things out in the market right now that it's so confusing to think what exactly do I need to just start off with makeup. So I'm going to show you what are my absolutely holy grail products that I think are essential when you're just starting out with makeup. <laughs> So I'm going to go through the products as I would apply them on my face and we're going to start off with foundation. So my recommendation would be to go for a BB cream. This is the Dior BB Hydro Life Cream and I really like this because A it's got SPF which is great because if you're not using an SPF moisturizer then this has got everything for you. And the great thing with this BB cream is it's got enough coverage for it to look almost like a foundation so you can build it up for a nighttime look but you can also really sheer it out and just slap it on like a normal moisturizer and you're ready to go in less than five minutes so it's a great option because you can use it for every day but you can also build it up for the evening I really like this because if you're just starting off with makeup, it's a very easy product to apply. You can apply it with fingers. You don't need any sophisticated brushes or tools to apply it on. So I think it's a great product. The next product would be concealer. And I know that in all my videos, I recommend color correcting before you conceal, but I really think you don't need a corrector for that. You can really make do with a red lipstick you've got lying around. Just dab a little bit with your finger in the areas where you, you've got more darkness underneath your eyes or in any pigmentation, and then you can apply concealer over the top. If you're lucky enough that you're under eyes circles are not very dark, then you can just go with concealer. My recommendation would be a concealer that you can use for everything, so under the eyes and also to cover any blemishes or marks, pigmentations, anything else you've got on your face. So I would say take a cream concealer, something that's not too heavy coverage, that's easy to blend, but at the same time it's going to cover enough that you can actually cover spots or marks on your face with it. If you want a really high end and you want to splurge, I would recommend the Clay de Peau Concealer. Mine's a bit worse for wear now, but it's absolutely amazing. This concealer blends in like a dream and you can use it on everything from under eye darkness to pigmentation to spots. It is absolutely amazing and it lasts a really long time. I also love it because it's like a stick applicator. It's so easy just to kind of brush it on your face and it's so easy to apply. It is quite pricey though, so if you don't want to splurge so much for a drugstore alternative, I would recommend the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. It is really, really good. Again, good for under the eyes and good for pigmentation spots. A one concealer that does everything. Next up, contouring and highlighting. Our recommendation would be to get a palette. That is the best option to just have everything in one place and not having to buy a separate bronzer and a separate contouring powder and a separate highlighter. I absolutely love the Anastasia palette. And I really like it because you can customize it and add the shades that you like and that fit your skin. The original contouring palette I think is a great option as a starter kit. It's got a yellow powder that's great to set anything under the eyes, concealer, corrector, so anything under the eyes in any areas where you've highlighted, so the bridge of your nose, your forehead, it's great. It's also got a highlighting powder, which is amazing to use on the top of your cheekbones, a little bit in the center of your forehead. It's got a bronzing powder, which is a warmer, brown shade so something very similar to this one which is a like a warm brown color and it's great because you can use it as a bronzer just to add a little bit of color to your face and then it's also got this color which is the color fawn which is amazing because it's a great contouring powder it's a cool toned brown but at the same time it's not so gray that it's going to make your skin look muddy or dirty so it's a great starter kit option i really really love this and i find myself reaching out for this almost every day next up cheeks 
So for a blusher, I would recommend that if you don't really know what suits you and you just want one blush, I would recommend going with a peachy pink shade. Something that's not too peachy, not too orange, but at the same time not too pink either. It's somewhere in between so you can either kind of build it up and make it really intense or you can just dust on a little bit and it's perfect for every day, you know, when you're just going to the office or to school, it's a great option. I really like the Charlotte Tilbury ones and my recommendation would be this one. This is the Swish and Pop Blusher in Ecstasy and it's really good because it's got a pinkier shade in the middle and then it's got a more peachy, dusky shade on the outside. So you can use either or or you can just combine both of them just swirling your brush around. You can just apply this shade on the outside on the kind of main part of your cheek and then just apply the pink on the apples of your cheek which is originally how it was designed to be used. So it's great because you've got two colours in one and you can create lots of different combinations. It's a great alternative, a little bit pricey again but a great option because it's going to last you for a really really long time and I absolutely love the, her blushes. They are so good, so long lasting, they don't budge during the whole day. So it is a great 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 option. <music> Next up, eyeshadows, and I think it's really worth investing in a good quality eyeshadow. I have never got on with drugstore eyeshadows. I find that they crease, that they don't last, that they budge, so it's really just not worth the money. And I think eyeshadows are something that lasts for such a long time that it's good to invest in a good quality eyeshadow. I would recommend going for a quad or a palette that's got a few different shades. There is the Urban Decay palette option which has got a lot of different shades but for me those eyeshadows are way too pigmented. I think when you don't really know what you're doing with makeup and you're just starting off you don't want something with that much pigmentation that it's going to be scary to put on your face because if you kind of take a little bit more on the brush you're going to end up looking like somebody punched you in the eye. So I think I would go for an option that's not so pigmented. The other downfall with such pigmented eyeshadows is that there's a lot of fallout here. So you will end up doing your foundation, putting some eyeshadow and then having to clean it all off. So I really like the Charlotte Tilbury ones. I would recommend going with one of her quads, any is a good option, but I would recommend one which has got neutral shades. So the Sophisticate and the Dolce Vita are both great options. The Dol Dolce Vita has got more shimmery shades, so if you like shimmer this is a great option. This one is great for highlighting or you can just use it to kind of just brush it all over your eyelid if you're in a rush and it just gives you a little bit of a glow but not too much. You can also amp up the glamour and use it in the evening if you've ever got a glitter shade. So it's a really great option because you've basically got everything you need to create lots of different looks. You can go as smoky or as light as you want. The other option, the Sophisticate, is kind of the same but without any shimmer. So it really just depends on whether you like shimmery eyeshadows or you like matte eyeshadows, but this again is the same. You've got a very neutral eyeshadow shade, you've got a bone color that you can use to highlight, and then you've got two darker colors that you can use if you want to amp up the smokiness for the evening. So any of these two would be a great option. <laughs> For eye pencils, I would recommend getting a brown and a black. Mine are really worse for wear. They look really small, but I absolutely love these by Estee Lauder. They are so good. They are the double wear ones. They are really nice, very blendable, but if you let them set for a couple of minutes, they really will not budge. I would recommend getting a brown and a black so that you can kind of amp it up or amp it down, depending on what look you're going for. Now for eyeliner, I would recommend getting a gel eyeliner. I think going in straight with a liquid eyeliner can be really really daunting when you really don't know what you're doing with makeup. Liquid eyeliner is quite difficult to apply and I must say after years of applying makeup I still struggle with it. So I would say a gel eyeliner is a great option. They kind of dry off like a powder so it's really nice and easy to blend in and if you make a bit of a mistake you can always just smudge it out a little bit and make it look quite smoky. So it's really nice. I love the Estee Lauder one because I find that a lot of gel eyeliners dry out really really quickly. This one I've had for a good six months now and it's still going strong, it hasn't dried out and it's really nice, it's quite black but it's not too, too, too intense but if you want to build it up you can do two or three layers and it'll go more intense but if you want a light everyday look it's a great option. <laughs> Another essential product is mascara. 
you should go with a one does all formula, I think. So something that's going to add length, add volume, and just make your eye eyelashes look absolutely amazing with just one mascara. My absolute favourite is the False Slash Effect from Max Factor. I've been using this since I think I probably started wearing makeup, so a good 10 years ago. It is a great option, it does everything. It lengthens, it thickens, it adds volume, it curls. It's absolutely amazing and it's really affordable, so I would really recommend this one. For brows, I would recommend getting a brow pencil or using some brown eyeshadow from your eyeshadow kit to fill in your brows. So a um, pencil is not really essential. If you've got a good brown matte eyeshadow, you can make do with that. But if you want a good pencil, this one by Charlotte Tilbury is amazing. <laughs> now for lips, I would recommend that if you're just starting off, don't get 10,000 lip colours, although it can be tempting and it's probably the most visually appealing thing in makeup, I would say just try to stake to getting a few just to start off and then see what suits you, see what you like. I would recommend going with a neutral nude colour that's not too pigmented and that it's very easy to just kind of slap on and go quickly. So I would go with a colour that's either peach or pink, something quite nude and neutral, but I wouldn't take a very intense nude that's going to wash you out. You want something that's kind of your lips but better. And I really like this one from, from Revlon. It's the shade Magnolia in the Ultra HD lipstick and it's really nice, very affordable and I like it because it's really balmy and really hydrating so very easy to wear and makes your lips look great. I would then recommend getting a more intensely coloured lipstick if you want to make your look a little bit more colourful. So you can either go with a red or a dark pink, depends what suits you and depending on what you like. I would say a classic red is probably the best option. I have this one by Chanel, which is a classic Hollywood red. I really adore this. Finally for lips, I would recommend a lip liner. So this I would recommend going in a very neutral shade. The Revlon ones are amazing. The Rimmel lip liners are absolutely amazing. I've been using the Rimmel Cappuccino for years. It's over unfortunately right now so I can't show it to you, but it is a very neutral browny nudie shade which is great. I've also got some from Max Factor. They are also absolutely amazing. I love them. They've got a very nice blendable texture and they're so easy to kind of just blend in with your lipstick and if you want to splurge a little bit more, this one by MAC in the colour Saw is fantastic. I would recommend going for a very neutral lip liner colour, so something that's kind of your lips but a little bit darker because that way you can apply it under any lipstick. It'll go with red, it'll go with nude, it'll go with any lipstick and you need one lip liner to suit everything. So that is everything guys. I hope it didn't seem too confusing. I know it seems like a lot of products and a lot to invest in at the beginning but if you buy good quality stuff it's really going to be worth the investment and it's going to last you for a very long time. So I hope this helped you and I hope it guided you through the crazy amount of makeup that is out there in the market and it helped you kind of narrow down to what are the absolute essentials. And I will see you in my video next time. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I can update you every time I upload a new video. You just need to press the button below which says subscribe. It really would mean so much to me. Also, please leave me in the comments below what products you think are essential if you think I've missed any. And I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Bye!